<laughs> Pretty nice. Okay. Okay, well, then, um, if there are no comments, we will adjourn the hearing as such, and we'll start the business meeting. You're on. All right. Um, we'll call this meeting of the Three Rivers Library System Board of Directors quarterly meeting to order at 1.55 at 1.55 p.m. Um, roll call. You need to yeah, right. Oh, I just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Oh, there you go. All right. President Carrie Green. Here. Only I'm not president anymore. So, so President so, Jennifer Moore. Yeah. President. No vice president. Uh, Secretary Dean here. Yeah. Yeah. And Treasurer yeah. Becky Sims not here. Dave Graber. He's here. Megan Thomas Evans. Present. Gretchen Long. And Chris Pipe. It's Bauermeister, but it's not right on that one. That's yes. not right. <laughs> Bauermeister. <laughs> There should be an M in there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I asked her to okay. change that, but they changed it. Well, it's changed on the brochure. It's okay. You know, on the on the pamphlet, the, oh, okay. Okay. the narrow one you have. Okay. Well, okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Introductions. I don't know if, if the other people though, who aren't on the board here want to introduce, introduce themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. We're going to introduce, yeah, I was going to say, go ahead. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'll just work down the line. Okay, just those off. I don't remember. Okay, I'm Tammy Team, Chanel Public Library. Lisa Mackey, Creighton Public Library. Lisa Bargeman, Bancroft Public Library. Rosa Schmidt, Oakland Public Library. Megan Miller, Cross County Community College School and Public Library. <laughs> I'm Chelsea Moreland, I'm from Three Rivers. Deborah Nagyakov, Barton Public Library. Krista Porter, Nebraska Library Commission. Eric Jones, Three Rivers. I did. You did, okay. Is yeah. that everybody? I think we got everybody. Okay. Do you want us to introduce ourselves to the people here? Or here? Well, let's see who's out. We'd see. My memory is really bad. Trump. Okay. Who's yeah. acting? Okay, we're connected. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead. Next. Oh. Okay. Want to introduce? Are we going to introduce? Okay, Karen Drevo, Norfolk oh. Public Library board member. Past president. <laughs> I'm Chris Bauermeister. I'm a Pierce Junior Senior High School and board member. I'm Jennifer Norton. I'm the director of the Neely Public Library and the new president of the Library System. Yay! Yay. I'm Tina Walker, Library Director of Fremont Key Memorial Library, and I'm the secretary. Dave Graver, Wayne State College Library Director, board member. Anything else you want to say, Dave? Hey, welcome to Wayne State. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, so I don't know that I need to do it again. Great, Dave, you're welcome. Well, yeah. <laughs> and you Mr. Don't all the streets. <laughs> all the streets I used to park on. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Megan Tomashevitz. I'm the director of the Kingwood Public Library, and I'm a board member as well. So we'll go move on to the approval of the agenda. I just need someone to make a motion to approve the current agenda as stated. Also move. Second. Okay. Next, moving on to the minutes of the, the last meeting. The that should was, have been sent to the board. Which was sent. Um, that was held at the Albion Public Library on May 3rd at 1.30. Um, if everyone had a chance to look at that, 
um, make any corrections, and if not, um, need a motion to approve the minutes of the May 3rd quarterly meeting. I still move to approve the minutes of May 3rd meeting as stated. I'll second. Moving on to item number nine, on to the finance. We have the end of the year review of the 2018-2019 report by Eric. Well, um, I you know, pretty it? much my pretty report much. From, the, from the meeting, I guess. Um, I felt it's been a pretty good year. Uh, we accomplished a lot of things, I think, with the help of my team of folks. Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, are there any questions about uh, comments from last year about last year's programming? Okay. Um, I guess if there are no questions or comments about the end of the year report, we'll move on to the acceptance of the final budget for 2019. And that is the budget that I quickly went over with the group. Are there any questions, comments about the budget? Okay. One of the things I will say, and what we'll, we'll just kind of drop down to another item here, I have requested from the board approval for a 2.2% salary increase for Chelsea and I. So that is one of the items that, that, and that's that executive session. If the board wants to approve that, or wants to have any discussion, A, and then we, then those that are not part of the board will need to leave the room. And um, uh, otherwise, um, the request is for a 2.2% increase. For me, that represents about $100 a month represents $100 a month and for Chelsea it is about a 20 cents about a 20 percent 20 cent per hour increase but it brings her up to $15 and 14 cents or something like that per hour Chelsea works um, six hours a day Three hours a week. So, um, I guess the question is, uh, if the board wants to have any sort of discussion, then we'll leave the room. That's up to the board. Yeah. Make a motion to move into executive session to discuss the salary of the, like, the director and the assistant for the first library system. I'll second. Okay. The first one. You, I made a motion. Oh, yeah, you did that. Ooh, good call. That's worth some kind of raise, remember that.
No, actually, it was a piece of paper. Okay, Jennifer, I think we're going to go back to order. Yep, so back to order. Um, we are on item B of item number nine, um, accepting of the final budget for 2019 2020. Um, or excuse me, we just finished up with C. So just in entertaining a motion for the acceptance of the final budget. I think um, we have to make a motion for the salary first. Because they're two separate items. Two separate, separate items. I, are we gonna you gonna are you gonna give us the the raise A and then to the final budget? Yeah, okay. I presented the budget. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. See, I'm new. That's right. <laughs> I, I will, if you're wait, wanting a motion, I will make a motion that we prove the raises as proposed. As proposed. I will. Oh, go ahead. Check Chris, Chris seconded that. And then, um, if someone would kindly make a uh, motion to accept the final budget for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. I will make a motion to accept the budget. Tina will second. Can I second? Okay. All right. Um, moving on to the quarterly year to date and expense report. By you should have all should have all received a copy of the of the expenses. Um, for actually it's the quarterly, which is really kind of flaky because it's it's actually two, if you think about it, it's two year, two financial years. We met in May, so it's the May, June check register, and then the July check register. So it's it's the, the quarterly is actually two two reports and the check register. If there's any funny business you think you see anything in the check register that's weird, strange. Jones is fiddling the books. That was the one that came out in Excel. No, that was the one. That it should have come to you. Yeah. You didn't get the. I think I did. I'm just trying to find the right. Yeah, well, I'm just saying it. You should have all gotten a copy of the check register in essence. What it is is quarterly expenses. We, we, I thought I had sent all of that stuff to you. If you can't find it, then maybe I didn't send it. I thought I had. No, I, I'm sure I got I it. I think I got it, too. I'm okay. trying to find yeah. right. All right. Yeah. So anyway, that's what that is. So we've you want to accept the, the, the report then? I need to do a better job. Oh, so go ahead now. You can accept the report then, the, the report. The financial report? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion we approve the financial report. And I'll second that. Okay. One of the things that Chelsea and I talked about to offset some of this is that there, we would like to set up on the system two options for the board, not two options, but two areas for the board. One would be an electronic board book. And we would take electronic print, or not print, but the files. And we would list those out out there, you know, in the area that would be the, the board book, the policies, procedures, et cetera, et cetera. And then we would do the monthly, excuse me, the, the reports that come to you. I would not send them to you as emails anymore. They would be there and I would say, my sort of thought organization was, here's the, here's the board, here the, here's the paperwork for this meeting and then in that would be all electronic version of all of this stuff i think that's a really good idea. so we wouldn't have to haul around or yeah, I, almost anymore. I love that idea yes. okay <laughs> what format are you putting it in say again what format are you putting it in? well probably google drive probably or google like, probably a google drive yeah. if i sent you yeah like if i sent you like a bit link to it then you can just open up that folder okay but 
Yeah. It's been wonderful for the scholarships. That's what Dave and I have done. It really has been fabulous. That's certainly better than dealing with paper. Cool. All right. Well, we'll begin to do that then for the next meeting is going to be in November. No. Let's see, August, September. He said September. So strategic, strategic planning. planning. So we were, well, well and that's the strategic planning meeting we're going to talk about in a second. But yeah, yeah, it'll be for the next board meeting, wherever that November. is. November. In November. Okay. So now, are we going, now the next item on the agenda is acceptance of the SIPA policy. Mm -hmm. We need a motion mm -hmm. to accept the computer use and SIPA policy as we talked about. About a half hour ago. Yeah, I'll move to accept it. Oh, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, sounds like we approved. Um, I would like for us to schedule a strategic planning meeting in September. And as always, here's here's a sort of an adjustment that I would like to propose. Either last year we met on an evening in Norfolk. The location is not important for me. The location is important for you guys. So the question is where? And then the second piece is we had about three hours, I think it was, for that strategic planning meeting. I would like to do, I would like to propose at least another evening, but my preference would, in fact, would probably be to do a Saturday. So how would you feel about board members? How would you feel like a, about a Saturday morning, about a Saturday meeting? It's going to be really tough to get me on a Saturday in September. Yeah. Okay. i got to be honest. Football. I can do a weekday. I don't know. I just want to do Okay. Well, you know, what I was trying to do was, yeah. School school is going to be a bear for Chris unless it's well, after, you get after, after school. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and Gretchen's also school. Yeah. So. I mean, I won't rule it out, but. A lot of my Saturdays are booked okay. already. All right. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll do it after school. Is there a particular either day of the week or time? So I'm thinking that is three o'clock or four. Back up a second. Four o'clock is that. Um, Chris, what time do you? Most teachers get out nowadays. What time do most of the schools? Three twenty, three thirty. But like I have a study hall, I can flex around and something. Okay, watch my but I was just thinking about. Yeah, Gretchen drives farther than I would. You know? Yeah, so what I'm thinking about would be an hour's drive. So if we for three thirty, so four thirty. So if we did a four thirty meeting, and then for a couple three hours, three hours, let's say. Uh, then we can handle it that way. How far apart are you two? I don't well, know where she's at. Gretchen is at um, oh, no, no, Mason. No, we're not anywhere. She's, she's in Omaha, to Omaha uh, Tribal School. Yeah, that's ways. She's, she's at um, Macy, I think. Oh, she's at Macy? I think she's at, in Omaha Tribal School. Where are you? Well, Wayne is sort of halfway between the two. I was just thinking Wayne might be a better location. Okay, so we want to do community meeting yeah. house. Yeah, oh. I'm sure we'd find room. Okay, so so a weekday, 4:30, uh, and what day are do you want me to send out a doodle? That might be best. Just send out a doodle. My my calendar is sort of up to date. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm flexible, but yeah. Wednesdays weren't the best for me, but. Okay. I was going to say, I would like Wednesdays. Wednesday. Wednesday. I hear I hear two Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday works Wednesday for me. Four. Okay. So let's do Wednesday, and I'll pick I'll pick a Wednesday and throw out on a doodle about what Wednesday at 4.30 or, or yeah, 4.30 or beyond. Okay. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, too. We talked about the board. What do you think, how would the board feel about inclusive of some members? 
either the SPCs or the or just generally inviting a, a group of members for a strategic planning. strategic planning piece. I might get more people interested in being yeah. on the board too, since we seem to have a retention problem. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Do you want to nominate, or do you want? Me to just put out a general call. I'd like it if you just put out a call. A general call. And if we need we them get names. All. Well, I don't expect to get them. Yeah, all. So, you know, to see if we can get two or three. Okay, a couple. Okay. What about the SPC? Oh, I think definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If they can come, then we'll, we'll include you guys. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll go from there. Correspondence. I really don't have any correspondence uh, from anyone. Uh, secretary doesn't have any, so we'll go from that. Okay. Scholars oh, go scholarships. A day and Chris. Well, there's a listing. I think you all got. We have one, two, three, four, nine that we have awarded thus far. Um, just awarded some as recently as what was it, about three or four days ago. Yep. Thank um, you. I believe those are listed here. They should be. Um, they are. Uh, basically two categories. Uh, five for the 25th Annual Joint Youth Services Retreat. And then four for NLA, NSLA, ILA. Um, do you want to talk scholarship policy about this, Eric? Or not? No, I, I sent you, yeah. there's a couple of things there. I sent the board members a, a listing. We could not find any written policies for scholarships. Okay? So I sent out a note to the other three regions and I said, What are your policies? And so I got back, I think, two. <laughs> I got two policy systems back, and I kind of took those, and I took some other things, and I got, maybe I had a toothache that day, I don't know. There were a few that were probably a little tighter than I should have made them. But anyway, we would like to put a, there's a couple of things. Number one is we would like to review at the strategic planning, the policies, the strategic plan, or excuse me, the scholarship policies. And the question is, is how loose or how tight does the board want to make them? Okay. The second thing that will happen, and I don't know that we'll get it done before the, before the meeting, uh, the strategic planning meeting, but uh, Chelsea is going to be working on an online form for an application for those. So that rather than filling out paper and, and then mailing in or emailing it in, It'll be a form online and it'll come into an online process. And I'm open to any suggestions about anything we want to change about our scholarship form as it stands now, since it's going to be going online. If there's anything we want to change or make more clear or make less clear, right. <laughs> um, just email me and let me know or let me know now because I'm open. One of the things I will tell you is there will be more clear catalog. Catalog, or at least not catalog, a listing of the types of things. Like expenses, you mean? Expenses. Yeah. Expenses. Yeah. That, that will be more clear. There will be clearer listings of expenses. And you can sum of those, <coughs> you can automatically calculate those, can we? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So we'll calculate those. One of the things about that they got confusing about this time, just for the board members, the there were a couple of folks that the youth services retreat starts early on the morning and so there were a couple of folks that asked to come in the night before uh one of yeah, your people Andy I, think, have, yeah. Andy. Andy, yeah, I think did before and so we went ahead and said and and um, todd with southeast had made those arrangements so we just went ahead and added that in so there were some people who were taking the one night and then another couple, three, because of the distance, we added a night before to it. The other thing that happened was on the meeting for the NLA meeting, 
there were uh, some folks who either had family in um, Omaha area and they were planning on staying the night with them. So they weren't asking for evening for, for night for room charges. They were just asking for registration charges or uh, that kind of stuff. So there was there was that, and then there were a couple I think that were like from Bennington, and Omaha. Oh, from Bennington, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And basically <laughs> live in the backyard. Yeah, so there wasn't any sense in that, and so that's why some of those ranged. Ranges a great deal in the requests. Right, the requests. But the other thing that I did this year, and I will send out another thing, is we will we will kick up the the marketing the announcement about. Do you think you might want to go? There's money to help you pay for that if you want to go. One thing I did notice in the stuff you sent out is everything has to be in 90 days prior. That was on the proposed, yeah. and I will we will take that. That's, that was when I had my toothache, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to rush Chelsea too much in getting. Yeah, well, that was the other thing was getting you guys scheduled was. But anyway, we, well, we'll, we'll, time somebody doesn't even know 90 days ahead. If yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the online apps is 30 days. We're just going to leave that alone. Is that right? <clears throat> For okay. now, yes. Okay. But, but the scholarships, as, as they're proposed, you guys are clear as to what's going to happen with those. Maybe you guys are okay. Okay. So the board, the uh, Karen had sent me a note and said, since you guys are okay with that, that's the way the board will take those that list that you have before you. Now, adjustments to that plan that you just brought up, we will make that. And I will be sending out another notice here saying here's the money, the money's available if you want to go do these things. The other thing that I don't think we market enough is this isn't the only list of things to go to. If you've got things that you would like to go to. For instance, Karen, Anika went to something in Denver. Social justices and libraries. Yeah, something, something like that. Um, it's some, yeah, it sounds really interesting. But that's all I can remember yeah. on this. So that was wide open to some other things. OK, so scholarships will be done the way you want it. We'll have a further discussion at strategic planning meeting about policies. But I think the policy business, this policy discussion that will help you guys with the scholarship committee. Okay, uh, nominations, um, Karen or Jennifer? Or? Uh, uh, well, I'm on the nomination committee, so um, which will need another person and a, a new board member to come in on that with me. So it's not just me, um, right. but we will need nominations for an opening on our board. So uh, there, you could go to the uh, Three Rivers Library System website and nominate someone or nominate yourself. And um, if you know of someone that's interested, let Jennifer know. Uh, we'll want to get that position filled as soon as we can. Sure, and I should know this, I don't. What are the qualifications to serve on the board? Didn't breathing. breathing. <laughs> I, would, I would assume some library experience is desirable. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to necessarily be a current library employee. You just have to live in the Three Rivers territory. Correct. You know, that's something that I think not, we talked about too. It does not too, list that, in the bylaws. There are yeah. not a qualification. There is not a qualification. No qualification. But that's something <laughs> the board at strategic planning might want to talk about. Right. I, I would think preferably we would want, of course, I guess it could be a library trustee. Right. It could be. Uh, Someone who's retired. Could be, you no, know, I mean, I'm just kind of, in my mind, running them through names. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mind, and I'm not sure who's. There are no qualifications listing today. Um, one of the areas has uh, a, uh, a librarian in the area or a, or a patron. And when I looked at their list, their patrons, they were looking at, they had some board members. And I'm assuming they went on as not as board members, but as patrons. And so 
So, but but there's that too. Now we have no real. I was, I was going to say, we don't have any board members, and as far as I know, there haven't been any board members, at least in the, in the, since the founding of Three Rivers. Now, some of you that have been around for a while, were there board members on the past ones? I think years ago, there may have been um, a trustee or two, uh, but not in years that, that I'm aware of. Well, I have no objections, and I guess, again, we need to clarify with uh, the bylaws. So we'll have that discussion at strategic planning. Okay. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Um, continuing education. Uh, coming up, we have, the end of this month, we have um, youth services retreat. Next month, uh, in September, I have Amanda coming to CCC to do a WordPress workshop. Um, then then uh, the 1st of October is the board, excuse me, the NLA meeting in La Vista. Uh, and then towards the end of, of uh, October, uh, we have another workshop um, that I have on the schedules that I'm not quite ready to announce, but there's another opportunity. And then on November the 1st, um, we're going to do that make and take that I talked about earlier. And I've talked with Tammy about doing one of those bears. Noah's Ark Animal Workshop. Yeah. Okay. My plan in that in that make and take is that we would do a lunch. Excuse me. We would we might charge for a lunch. Okay. Um, we would try to do it at a place where it's going to be less expensive than like here. It'd be more like a ten dollar, twelve dollar kind of a lunch. But we also would charge for the make and take. For instance, those. Probably about eleven dollars. So we know it's me about eleven dollars for one, and then my thought was is five dollars for each. There would be two more opportunities, and then what we would do is let's say Jennifer is going to do a presentation, and we've got ten people coming. So we would give Jennifer, let's say fifty dollars, five dollars a person, and she would buy supplies in order for everyone to make something that she was going to do. So the idea is that Jennifer doesn't stand the cost and that Three Rivers doesn't stand the cost, but the individual does because they're taking it with them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you know where this is going to be. Well, I haven't, I haven't okay. checked just, those out okay. yet. I'm just saying this is on the 1st of November. We okay. haven't scheduled. Uh, part of it's going to be an issue, um, Karen, with um, space, because I, you know, if I've got fifty people, I know I'm not gonna have that many. But let's say I got twenty people. I don't know. Back in the day, we used to get seventy-five or more at these <laughs> okay. things. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the kind. That's what I'm kind of waiting for is to see how how many we might get for them. Uh, are, you, are you still looking for people to to? present like yes. we can take things because yes. I'm I'm pretty crafty so I'd be interested in coming okay. up with something. So if you've got something that sure. you would like to do, we certainly would take that into All consideration. Right. And I, that's the other thing is I need to put a call out to say who's gonna do this kind of thing. Okay. Um remember. Uh, then pretty much we go to sleep <laughs> in December. <laughs> November to December is kind of a wipeout because everybody's focused on the holidays. And then I haven't gotten past December. So that's kind of the, the continuing education agenda for the for the next few months. Um, I'd just like to add sure. e rate training oh. will be done um, to be determined in October okay. sometime. 
Um, previously, we did it in November, but that was getting, for me, traveling across this, well, not for here, but traveling across the state, I had to cancel too many times when I was comfortable because of weather. So um, I'm going to E-Rates training for applicants in Washington, D.C. in September. So then I'll be scheduling the E-Rate trainings around the state in October. Um, so date to be determined. Um, we'll figure that out. And one of the things that we talked about mm -hmm. is that, for the lack of a better term, we would have an E-Rate party. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. Sounds Thank you for nice. <laughs> positive. Where Krista, we would get everybody in a room, or those that want are interested, we get everybody in a room, and we would do our applications for E-Rate as a group <laughs> at that point in time. So under Krista's tutelage, we know they would be done correctly. Would you sit by me, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have my keyboard? <laughs> and so that, that's kind of the, the format we talked about. Thank you for reminding me about that. So the idea would be to bring those up. Okay. All right, great. Anything else that I missed, Krista, you can think of? Of course, we've always got Krista's Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever wants to present on something, let me know. Um, I know some of you have that, I'm sure people have it. Um, if you want to share and talk about it. We will be doing, oh, because we'll be coming up, opening up for a call for uh, presenters, um, speaking about small libraries. Big Talk from Small Libraries is at the end of February, but I will be opening up the call for presenters, um, call for proposals sometime October, November. So this is the, the online one day conference. I do this for all the presenters are from my people of um, FTE or um, population served 10,000 or less. So not that 25,000 cut off that they, that's what I prefer. Um, so small libraries sharing what they're doing. This is not it is not anyone talking at you. It's just all the actual libraries talking about what they're doing. So if anybody does want to present about something you're doing, uh, look for that call to open up in the fall too. Okay. All righty. Um, activities reports. Board members. Karen, you want to kick off? Okay. Um, well, <laughs> it's been pretty crazy as you all of you doing summer reading. Our summer reading program ended last night at 8 o'clock, and uh, we had just over 1,700 participate this year. Oh, wow. And Jeez. I haven't gotten a count yet of how many turned in completed reading records, but we had um, in June and July, I think 75, roughly 75 youth programs. And um, of course, last weekend was our 25th annual uh, literature festival, and our authors were amazing. Uh, we had Troy Cummings and Rob Bouye, um, Wendell Van Dronen, and Jeff Herbach, and they all have books that are nominated for this coming school year's Golden Soar Awards. And Jennifer was there, and she's been to a few of these. And I, I think it's fair to say that these four authors were the most animated we've ever had. They were all like stand-up comedians. <laughs> and um, anyway, it, it was it was everything went like clockwork, and we're just um, so jumping from that to Monday right away. We started our strategic planning for a library, and had a consultant there that I, my brain just wanted to my head wanted to explode, but I survived and. Um, it's just we've had a great summer. We're loving our new library, and um, we um, right now this is the first time in a couple of years that we haven't had some staff turnover, and um, so things are uh, smooth sailing right now. But as we all know, that can change in a heartbeat sometimes. Uh, but it's it's been a great summer, and. Uh, we're already planning our 26th annual literature festival, so we'll have some more great authors. So those of you who've never been, I, I really hope you come sometime. It's just a, you get to start off the day with a writer's workshop, if you like, with one of the authors, or you could come 
uh, listen to my assistant and myself preview the 30 books from the reading list for the coming school year's Golden Solar Awards. And then you get to hear all four authors speak. And we have lunch, we had Barnes and Noble there selling the books by the authors this year and a uh, big autograph session. We had so many door prizes we gave away this year. Every single person got a door prize. <laughs> and those are autograph books and stuff. So um, it was, I think the thing that I, it is so gratifying to me is to see the kids that are there just on the edges of their seats listening to these authors and laughing and getting to interact with them. And the authors are always so good with, the, with everyone, but especially with the kids. And um, every year when I invite authors, I always send them a list of authors we've had in the past. And um, every year I hear from the authors, oh, I know such and so, and, and when I call and said, hey, you know, should I do, oh, you've got it, because we, I'll tell you, we don't pay nearly their going rate. <laughs> and, but we get them there because we get such good word of mouth that we're, we're organized, it's fun, and the authors love um, getting to see each other do their presentations. They say that rarely, rarely happens. And so they, they like to do our festival, and we make it fun, we feed them well, and <laughs> um, it's just a lot of fun. I think. It's been a highlight of my career to be, coordinate that every year. So that's all I have. And you have a new, for those that don't know, you have a new associate staff member. Yeah. Anika's new addition. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anika's little baby boy. He's just cute mm -hmm. as can be. And, and today, actually, is Anika's first day back from maternity leave. So I knew oh, she had a baby? Yeah. I did not know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In May. And, and, um, as cute as can be, and um, Ezra, right? Ezra, Ezra, Michael, Ramirez, and then something else, and then Michael's last name, and I can't remember what it is, but um, yeah, he's he's a real sweetie, and um, so we do have our new staff member, and Anika <laughs> is back on board, so um, she keeps it just her. right, didn't she? Yeah, she did, after. And, and she missed their big strategic planning thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'll have a baby every time, though, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a long stream, yes. Chris, you had the summer off. Yeah, I was telling some of the gals during lunch that they put new carpeting in our high school, and so that's a lovely gift, but it is daunting because my my shelves are put back, and other than, you know, books are scooted in the wrong spot, physical space is fine there, but I have this cluster of just things with no home in the middle of my library. Like, I inherited some plastic fruit. I, I mean, my kids are thrilled when they come in, but anyway, so I need to get my physical space going on as well as my other stuff. And then last year in my classroom was where we had run the maker space out of, like the CNC machines, two vinyl cutters, the laser, all that stuff. Well, that is now moving to my library, so there's another adult, you know, on staff with it too. But that's coming sometime in this next week or so because I am one week out from starting, so it will all happen just magically. <laughs> <laughs> just and I should mention right? we just got our new laser cutter, um, and it's a couple steps up from what we used with the grant. So uh, we're excited about that, and we had an embroidery machine donated, very nice new one. That's a step or two up from the one that we had through the grant. So, we're getting there. Jennifer? Um, well, our summer reading, I don't know the numbers, but not, nothing near Karen's, but I think that's our whole town. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, we partnered with the Extension office again this uh, summer, and so it had some great programming. Mm -hmm. Kids made some rockets, and we closed off the street, and the kids did their rockets, and off they went. Mm -hmm. um, Last Thursday was our last program, and we always end with a water slide. We have a, a small little slope in our backyard, so um, Annie brings in a tarp, hooks up the hose, <laughs> soaps them up a little bit to make a little more frictionless, <laughs> and off they go. Um, so they have a good time. Um, 
the reading portion of the program actually ends this Friday. It's fair week, so um, we don't do any programming during fair week. It's just we can't compete with that. We will end the summer completely on Monday the 5th. We have been doing for the last, gosh, I forget, eight, ten years, um, an end of summer street dance and party. So it's uh, Tammy's brother-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Thiem, who comes in and does a DJ for us. He's great. My husband comes and he's the grill master. He <laughs> does hamburgers and hot dogs with his Traeger grill. We have music. The friends bring tons of food. Kids have a ball. Um, yes, it's open to the public. We close okay. off the street um, from 6 to 9 p.m. and send them home and hope they're ready for school in a couple of weeks, <laughs> 10 days actually. Um, so that was our summer kids stuff. Um, we also do an adult program reading incentive. We did a game where they had to blast off and they had to actually count down from 10 in front of a librarian. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and After was, how many shots? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we, we don't expect well, anybody to be perfect the first time. Um, and as they read through the genres, and I don't remember how many uh, books there were, or genres and different things they had to do, but at the end, to, mission accomplished was they had to recite the alphabet, so we make it really hard for adults to finish. Um, and of course, we, in between there, there's little prizes they could win, and it was, they, they spun a little spin, a fidget spinner on the game board, and could win candy or bottle of water, bottle of Gatorade, or ice cream cone from one of the um, downtown restaurants. So that's always fun to see <clears throat> what adults will say, yeah, I'll read out of my comfort zone. <laughs> so that was summer reading, but one of the things that I really was proud to be able to host was on July 18th, um, the Nebraska Library Commission and the Nebraska Arts Council partnered to bring Nebraska strong creative relief to communities that were directly affected by the flooding this past spring. So we had a list of artists, both um, you know, musical artists, storytellers, visual artists to choose from. And we simply had to reach out to them through an email or something and ask them if they would come. And so we had Joey Galizia, he's from Omaha, and he does steel drum and other percussion and he came on July 18th for an evening program. It was the last day of that really hot spell. So I think we would have had more people, but we'd still had close to 40, which is huge for kneeling. I don't know where everybody goes, but it's not the library always. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. And the fact that um, it was a relief effort um, by the Library Commission and the Arts Council. Um, and though you mentioned that our our town was not, or our library was not directly affected. There were people within our community that were directly affected by the flooding. Um, so it was just kind of, it was a summertime kind of concert with a tropical twist. So a kind of Jimmy Buffett feel, if you want to think of it that way, just without the margaritas. Um, but that was a lot of fun. So looking forward to some fall programming. And other than that, just business as usual. Good. Maybe we want to move to Neely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need the economic development, so come on. <laughs> well, and you, nice you were greatly affected personally. Yes, personally, yeah. yeah. So, but on that note, um, our renovation remodel of our home is completely done. We, um, Woo! With completely new furniture and everything's all done, except for a little bit of trim work. Otherwise, the rest of it's just the, the outside dirt work. So, we have That's a big relief. The entire home, yeah. our entire home can be utilized now, just not the upper level. Because <laughs> so, you had huge chunks of ice. Oh yeah, we had big basement. chunks of ice in oh. our basement. Because you take out your doors and put in a wall, right? Yeah, we we took out the, the two walls and poured high walls um, with big egress windows. So we basically purchased a third of our house again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So it was, it's been an adventure, but it's all done. And I'm just so eternally grateful for, you know, the programming that was offered and, um, you know, the community just really rallied around us and my church family. So a lot of people had it worse, but we were very fortunate and so blessed to be done. <laughs> so hopefully it's not a yearly occurrence. <laughs> 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 but I think with 
the way we remodel, we won't have that type of issue again. The water's going to get really, really high. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, can you have? Well, apparently it doesn't matter how high the water gets because it comes to your it's storyline. Really oh, yeah. yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you do rebuild your walls and yeah, it comes up fifty thousand dollars to build a wall, <laughs> just look up to your sewer line. So my house is just getting finished this week. Um, the contractor got done putting down the floating floor because I put wood floors down mm -hmm. and no more carpet ever. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, right. They didn't put the spacers in the wood. And so oh, no, it's we came back down, the floor buckled. Oh. And I'm like, what the? Oh, so very good. Um, so they're doing that today. Um, so I'm I'm almost done with my flood disaster. And I, I can honestly say, kind of glad I went through it because then I knew what the patrons coming in the library were going through. Mm -hmm. um, we have families that are still living in campers in Fremont. Um, there's a family, a big library supporters, three children, a dog, and two parents living in a tiny little camper with no heat in there. Mm. Oh, oh that was a lot to tell. Yeah. yeah, and their house was only valuing at fifty-five thousand. The damages were at forty, so the city oh. said you have to demolish it. Oh. So they got it. Somebody <coughs> came and reassessed it for them at ninety-nine thousand. Okay. So they're below the fifty percent mark. So they can. They had to take out a third mortgage on their house. Um, they had to take out an SBA loan, and you have to pay it back in three years. And all this stuff, I mean, they should have just filed bankruptcy and walked away, but so now they're in debt up to their eyeballs, but they got to keep their house. Mm -hmm. And they're still working on it. They expect to maybe be able to move in by the end of August. <laughs> and you have another, another exciting thing with your library. Oh, my expansion. Well, oh, uh, that, that too. Yeah, that's 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 what's what's going on. on. <laughs> Which one? Your friends. Your library or friends organization. Out of the whole oh, yes, they did. So I... Don't know why, but I filled out the Baker and Taylor and Friends nomination application for ALA. And at ALA this year, uh, Friends of Key Memorial Library won the $1,000 for Baker and Taylor. And they gave it to me for SRP. So that was pretty awesome. And uh, I, it didn't take long to fill out the application. I just put how they were supporting our expansion project, our summer reading program, how much money they provide us every year, and all the volunteer work that they do for the library. And I detailed all that. It was like a page long, sent it in, and they won. So, cool. yay! Yeah. Send yeah. your friends yeah. groups in. I forgot about that picture. Um, our friends are also helping with our expansion project. Uh, they just hired Paul Strawhacker and Associates at Omaha to do fundraising for us. Um, Use them for a community survey. And a lot of people have used Paul. Um, he was actually recommended by our community foundation board. So, we're going with them. We are behind on fundraising. Everybody keeps going, why haven't you raised all your money? Well, we had a single flood, <laughs> and uh, I had a the disaster. disaster is going to the people who don't have homes. So I feel stupid asking for money for a library expansion. Mm -hmm. But we did allow FEMA in. Somebody else let FEMA in um, to uh, use their library. So Skyler, Skyler. Skyler did. Skyler. And so they came in and used our rooms, and they just popped in on a couple Saturdays and said, uh, can we just set up a table? And we're like, yeah, sure. So they did. Um, where, like I said, we're opening up the job fairs for all kinds of organizations. We, in case you don't know this, and you live within 100 miles of Fremont, we have nine businesses looking for people to work for them. We do not have enough people in Dodge County to fill these positions and these jobs. So anybody you know who says they don't have a job, mm -hmm. you need to send in Fremont. Um, <laughs> structural component systems can't keep enough people. You have to be physically able, but they start at like 18 bucks an hour. And they're paying $21 an hour for people on second shift. The Hormel plant is going to put in a second shift at the end of the year, but they just converted their whole shift, everything they're doing in the plant. Um, Costco, of course, is looking for a ton of people. And then I guess there are seven additional businesses that have built in town that support Costco that are all looking for people. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking for office people, accountants, um, customer service, telephone, line workers. I don't know, you name it. I don't even think a job you couldn't get right now. Um, so if you need a job, if you're not getting one, you're not trying. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a sheet with all that listed that we could post in our library? I think that uh, Chamber has it. I can find one for you, but I'm pretty sure Chamber of Commerce has yeah, yeah. the list nice. of job listings. And I know um, Big Dog Radio, whatever you want to call it, 1055, whatever the other channel is, they have our job listings and the Tribune has online, you can look at job listings. So for us, summer reading program was huge. Um, I'm texting the horror right now. We had 54 total programs, so that was classes, our big five, big Monday events. Um, we had over 3,100 participants just in the programs and classes. We have, we've reached 199% of what we wanted to be registered. So we doubled what we had, our expectations were. We had 597 people registered to log minutes. Um, we logged 170% of our goal. 
426 people were logging and our minutes were insane. They're like 600,000 minutes or something crazy again. <laughs> our goal was like 123. So Laura just kept upping it every week. We have another two weeks of program left. We ran out of prizes yesterday oh, <laughs> for the God. second time. So when the friends won that thousand dollars, they gave it to us to go buy more prizes yeah. because we ran out. Um, Call up Oriental Trading. <laughs> well, we actually changed the way we usually give out books. But we had so many uh, low-income families impacted by the flood, we switched over and did school supplies. Oh, and there's um, they got, I can't remember the name of the website. But you can go buy back backpacks that have cases in them with pens and pencils and stuff. They're like six dollars a piece. Uh, Laura oh, Price went to the library vendor. And so she got backpacks and then pen and pencils cases with pens, pencils, crayons, and man, those things flew off the shelves. We couldn't keep them, but we had no idea that many families were impacted. Um, our adult program, we were actually starting to kick that up. We're increasing our, our volunteers for the teens. We have our first uh, pet volunteer. It's a giant um, Great Dane, is that right? Okay. Well, it looks like a horse. Mm -hmm. Great Dane. So we have a volunteer volunteer slash intern who um, has a seizure type disorder where she falls oh, so the horse dog catches her tells her in advance and then catches her and helps her lay down if she has one um so the last two days we've been dealing with a drunk guy in the library that wants to eat the dog no. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> he showed up again today that's what i've been texting about and he's going to go home and get his pit bull let it come back and eat that dog um so he's getting trespassed this afternoon He's drunk on top of it, Jeez. so he just go away. But so we're increasing our volunteers, the pets. Uh, you know, when they have therapy dogs, you just you gotta let them come in. Um, that thing's humongous. I'm not gonna lie. I could get out of here riding like a horse. Uh, our outreach is going gung ho. Um, we're reaching out to everybody in the community, and now we're actually uh, taking suggestions. Like if you know a neighbor who's injured themselves and they can't get in and out of the house, you can call the library and we'll contact with them and say, hey, you need us to bring you materials. So even if it's on a short-term issue, because uh, we have some uh, permanent residents of our library that just disappear. So we'll follow up and ask them. And lo and behold, they've had surgery and they can't get to the library, so they stop checking out stuff. So we'll bring it to you. So we drive out there and deliver stuff to them. It's, we have an old town, if you guys don't know that, like 65% of our population is over 60. So, and we just keep randomly getting these. Um, let, me, let me ask Kate. You all need to do this. I don't care where you live, what town you are in, what size it is. You need to find every old person in your town and start taking stuff to them, and et cetera. We received um, a check for seventy-five thousand oh, dollars from some lady that nobody knows, but she lives <laughs> at one of the older old folks' homes that we take all the books oh, to, yeah. and she just loved our little library, and she gave us all her money when she passed away. And we got another check for fifty thousand, then we got another check for twenty-five thousand, and then this is all just people who live at these uh, nursing homes. Yeah, we've had the homes. outreach for. Yeah, probably 50 years. We've never gotten checks like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cookie once. <laughs> <laughs> I get three foundation calls and says we have this huge check from you and so and so, and I'm like, I have no idea who that is. Wow. And you read the letter and it's thank you nice. for all the books and nice. coming out. And yeah. So, like I tell my staff, I don't care who walks that door. You don't know who they are. So you treat them like they're your uh, best uh, next donor. Yeah, yeah. You never know. You never know who they are. Wow. So. Very cool. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm kind of like Chris. We're in summer mode right now. Um, Look at you. <laughs> this is not what it looks like during the school year, but this is what it's looked like for the last couple months. Uh, summer school is pretty much an online entity at Wayne State yeah. now, like it is at most universities. So our building is kind of like this ever since uh, first of June or late May. Uh, but that's changing in a week, so we're gearing up for start of school. Um, did make a new hire just about three weeks ago. Uh, Haley Sam's out, our new evening supervisor. She's a University of Nebraska Omaha grad, a library science degree about four or five years ago. Just moved back into the area after living in Omaha. And she's a Taekwondo instructor on the side, so she's going to be able to put all study all the way. There you go. She, she'll be fine yeah. at night. Yeah, it's surprising. Right. She's about five foot two and doesn't weigh much. So <laughs> <they got it. laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's not a Wayne State Library thing, but I will throw out the Wayne Public Library has had a lot of success with trivia night at the local brewery. They do once or twice a month. Uh, you know, it'll be 80s night, or it'll be Disney movie night, or whatever, and has had really good turnouts for those. Um, so if you have a brewery in town, consider partnering with them. 
Is that uh, a Johnny Bird? Johnny Birds, yeah. Greg Tachek is a Neely yeah, transplant. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. Yes. Yes. He was yeah. our economic development director right. two years yeah, ago. Yeah, and I did know his that. His wife now moved, and she's going to be yeah. at the school. Yep. And they just had another child, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're ready to gear up. Um, but I don't have a lot to report because the last two months, frankly, have been pretty slow. We're prepping for fall. I miss academic libraries. Yeah, it's a different kind of model. We don't have drums to come in for what it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine are expelled when they can Good. Thank you. Um, well, my summer has not been quiet and relaxing. Um, the summer reading program ended yesterday. Um, we had about 65 kids sign up and then you know half or a quarter participated. I haven't looked at the numbers yet because I'm worried they're going to be disappointing but um, we usually just have kids that are separated into three different age groups. They read a certain number of books and when they bring back the books they get a prize. Um, I enjoyed the theme this year. I'm really into space and moon landings and stuff but because I was doing CE classes and then working on accreditation, we kind of had a more low-key truncated um, summer reading program. We only did two programs this summer um, and both were, it was, I don't know, 10 or 11 participants, which is average for um, our programming. But um, so I'm, I'm ready for the kids to go back to school. <laughs> I really, I really, I really am. That is terrible to say, but um, other than that, um, we got an AED, which is a defibrillator for the library. Um, I wanted one, I've been there two years, over two years, and I've wanted one ever since I started. Um, I think they need to be in all public, all public buildings, but they're pricey, so. At first, the foundation told me no, 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 even though they're sitting on, you know, $72,000 and they won't buy me an AED, but um, that's neither here nor there. And finally, they just, they do their annual wine and cheese thing for the alumni on Memorial Day weekend, and they wanted to know if there was anything specific that I would like them to raise money for, and I said, an AED. And they acted like it was a brand new idea, like I've never talked about it before. And I'm, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'll just pretend that this was something new. Um, so they very graciously raised $1,700 for the AED and then covered the cost of the rest of it. So they're about $2,500 a piece. And then um, I had thought that we would have to pay for training on how to use it. Nope, the local fire department said we'll come for free, show you how to use it. Excuse me. Um, so I'm very excited to get that installed. I hope to God it sits on my wall and collects dust and I never have to use it, but very excited to have it. So um, that felt like a big, a big win for us. So yeah, those yeah. are the two, two major things that have gone on this summer. But If you do have an AED machine in your building, how many do? Was the last time you opened and checked the expiration dates? I was going to say, that we do. Yeah, yeah we, our never safety committee ours. is just really on that. So, yeah, I just, oh, I started. I opened that box up and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. This wasn't going to say anything. No, but <laughs> before we had one years ago, this has probably been 15, 20 years ago, it was a Saturday morning. And in our old library, my desk was right by the doors, people could go in and out. And I had a man go down right in front of my desk. You. And um, it was this lovely couple that they came to the library together every week. And this was right before Thanksgiving. And they had just been telling me minutes before how excited they were. They just had built a new home and all their kids were coming home for Thanksgiving. Uh, oh my gosh. But boy, just like that, I picked up the phone and called 911. And I mean, they're there. They're in like 90 seconds. And in the meantime, um, we started CPR on him, but we didn't have that AED. Mm -hmm. And um, they worked and worked and worked on him. But, yeah. So it's, you need that. Yeah, you need to, I, I've often wondered if we would have that AED True. then, to, if that would have made a difference. We did everything you could. Yeah, we did, we did. Um, but now you know there's devices. Yeah. yeah, so you never know when you might use it. Um, anything more from you, uh, Krista? Yeah, I said no, nothing in addition to my report from before. Okay. I was everything. All right. 
and I have nothing else to do. Those of you who are here, anything you have to say from your libraries, you'd like to teach your heart. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, it's been a great meeting as far as I know. I hope it's been okay for you. Yeah. Uh, please make sure you do your evaluations. I, we really, really would like to see those. Um, you know, we need to adjourn that, but I was going to just a couple of things. And then um, announcement two is out on the table out there, there's some tins, there's a box of post-its for Green Rivers uh, yeah. out there. Make sure you get some before you leave. Um, let's see. Um, I guess if there's nothing else, Jennifer. Okay. If nothing else, then I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 3.05 p.m. I will second the motion to adjourn. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Thank, Thank you all for a great day. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for hosting us, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Thank you. You. This was nice. We'll do it again here. Yeah. Oh, man, I, had, I had such a good soldier drinking up here today. It was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, there's cooking. There's some cokes out here. Water. Take, take one with you as you leave. And if you do that um, evaluation, you can just drop it in a tray and I'll pick them up later. Oh, that's what those were for. I just my night. You're like, here, take out that. Okay. Like, so, I know. I just keep tossing it in. So. No, I know what it is. Well, you have books for me. Yes. Okay. Nice work on this one. All meetings. Um. Can we talk about